All right, so we'll do a quick sign analysis uh, 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 solution to this. So this is an inequality, and you could graph it and find out what x values cause this to be uh, smaller than zero, or you could use sign analysis, which includes this. What you want to do is you want to factor this uh, polynomial, factor this trinomial. So you can do this by trial and error. Um, you can do decomposition method if you want. Um, I'm just going to do trial and error, so I'm going to try a 3x there and a 2x there. I'm going to split this up. I'm also going to split this up into, like, let's say, 4 and 5. Let's see what that does. Um, I've got 15 here and I've got 8. Is there any combination of 15 and 8 that gives us 7? Yeah, actually. So watch this. If this was negative 15x and plus 8x, that would give us negative 7x. So you could solve this by intuition or you could use the decomposition method, which I won't go over in this example. But I think this works out. So 3 times 2 is 6. x times x is x squared. I have negative 15x plus 8x gives, a, gives me negative 7x. And then positive 4 times negative 5 gives me negative 20. So this is what I have. And this is what you want to do sign analysis on. If you have this, uh, this situation, do sign analysis. Girls, quiet down there, please, while I'm just doing this. Thanks. Just whisper. So what, this is how you set up sign analysis. Put your factors, just as they are shown, on the left side of this kind of elongated L chart here. So we're going to make it look like this. Put your factors on the side. Just list each one of them. Here there's only two. I would suggest putting f of x, or whatever your function really is, this whole function, uh, down here at the bottom. Now this serves right here as your number line. And what you want to do, first of all, is, is um, put your zeros on the number line first. So where does this factor equal zero? Well, if you want to do that separately on the side, you can. 3x plus 4 equals uh, zero. Where does that happen? Well, when 3x equals negative 4, or when x equals negative 4 over 3. Okay? So you put that on your number line somewhere down here. Just make anywhere negative 4 over 3 on your number line. And that, this factor right here is this top row, and that factor is going to be 0, so 0 at this number right here. Now what you do is you fill in the, to the left of the 0 and to the right of 0 whether that factor is positive or negative given the values on the number line. So if we have a value that's less than negative 4 over 3, let's, let's say negative 10. That's just a random number, negative 10. That's clearly over here on the number line. So negative 10, what happens if I put a negative 10 in for x? Well, let's just see. 3 times negative 10 plus 4 is going to equal negative 26. So this is the big thing, negative. So all of these values to the left of this 0 are negative. You put negatives there. And it, it, as it follows, if you have a large x number, 3 times a large number plus something is going to be positive. So one side is going to be negative, and one side is going to be positive. A little hint, here's a little hint, if you can remember this. If this x term is positive itself, then when you find the 0, it's always going to be negative to the left and positive to the right. Okay? But you still should check just to make sure. So here we go. 2x minus 5. Well, 2x minus 5 equals 0. Where is that? Well, that's 2x equals 5. x equals 5 over 2. So positive 5 over 2 is going to be over here to the right of this number on the number line. That's where we're going to have a 0. And again, any number that's less than 5 over 2, like 0 is in here somewhere, 2 times 0 minus 5 is a negative number. 0 minus 5, that's negative 5. So you're going to have negatives all the way over here, and positives all the way over here. So setting up the sign analysis chart is the big, most important thing. Now that we've got this, we've got all the factors and we've got sort of their positive, negative uh, part of the domains there, we've got that identified. Now what we do is this. This is crucial. In this region right here of the number line, all of these, um, the, the value for this factor is negative, and so is the value for this one. So if you have a negative number times right here, a, a negative times a negative, what do you get? You get a positive value, so you write positive underneath here. The function itself is positive if any of the x values are over here, because it's a negative times a negative. Now here, this 0 times a negative, that's going to be 0. So the function will be 0 there. 
Now we look at positive times negative. That means the function will be negative in this uh, domain here, part of the domain, this region. Positive times zero is zero, and positive times positive is positive. So this is really what we're after down here, right? We're after this. You want to know where the function is positive, negative, and zero. And that will tell us where the solution is for our original question. So here's the answer. So watch this. I'll put it in red. So where is the function less than zero? That is, where is it negative? Well, it's negative right here. It's zero at negative four over three and zero at five over two. But because there's no or zero in the question, we reject those actual values. So the answer is this. The solution set is anywhere where x is between, so you use these, this notation, between negative 4 over 3 and positive 5 over 2. And you can put comma x er if you want. You don't have to for me. But that is your solution. So let me just uh, show you. I'll zoom in there. So that is your solution, negative 4 over 3, less than x, less than 5 over 2. Because this is the, the area where that function is negative, And that lines up with your question, where is this function negative? OK? So that's what sign analysis looks like. And that's how you're going to use that on your, uh, on your test for this chapter. Any questions about that? Okay. List all the factors over here on the left. List them all. And do this little row for each one. Zero, negative, positive. And then you multiply down to get where the function is negative and positive. Okay?